In this video, we're going to look at some of the steps for editing or fine-tuning uh, a duct system. Uh, first, we'll start with this duct over here, where I have a sheet metal branch coming to a, um, uh, an elbow uh, where, before I reach my, my register. Now, I might decide that instead of a uh, sheet metal duct and an elbow, that I want to use uh, flex duct to do this. And so I might get rid of or delete that duct there and instead connect this with a straight line. Now, as you'll see in our uh, um, radial system or flex duct system uh, video, um, we recommend that uh, when drawing your uh, flex connections, you start with straight lines before you start bending the flex. It's, it's a lot easier. Um, now, the problem here is I don't want all of my branch runs to become flex duct. I just want this branch run to become flex duct. And so by right-clicking on that duct and that duct alone, I can look at the properties for this duct. And I can see that right now, it's sheet metal. Now if I change this property here, from sheet metal to round flexible vinyl, I now have flex duct. Note that the size of the duct changed automatically to account for the higher coefficient of friction, um, and that the icon that we use for the duct became a squiggly line designating a flex duct. Okay. Um, now what I can do with this duct is I can now, that it's flex duct, and make sure it's connected, by the way, my edit points tool lights up. And I can click on that edit points icon there, and when I hover my cursor on the duct, I see my add edit point icon. If I hover my cursor somewhere along this duct, doesn't actually really matter where, left click and hold and drag, I can bend that flex duct like so. There are other things I can do to edit this duct system. Let's say here where my trunk line elbows over uh, to move out of the way of an obstacle. Let's say I didn't go far enough or I went too far. If I try to move this trunk line, moving it piece by piece is going to be difficult. See, I'll have to move that piece, then I'll have to delete this extra piece here, then move that down and move that down. Or I'll have to delete whole sections of it. It can be uh, rather difficult, which is why we have uh, this icon here. It's called our uh, special trunk moving mode. Okay, and if I turn that icon on, what it's going to do is it's going to encourage the program to keep the trunk together. And so if I move one piece of the trunk line, all of the other pieces down and upstream are going to try to move with it as best they can, making it easier for me to reposition a trunk without having to delete whole sections of it or do it one at a time. It's generally advised you only use this mode uh, when you're trying to move uh, a section trunk as, as I have here. There are other things I can do from the duct property sheet as well. By right-clicking on a duct, in addition to changing the duct material, um, I can change the insulation value that we use on the materials list. Um, I can even determine whether or not I want this duct to be automatically sized. If I turn automatic sizing to no, I can then manually change a duct size. Now this can come in handy in a few situations. For example, um, if I wanted to uh, run a duct that uh, started off as sheet metal but ended as flex, um, there are a couple things that I can do to do that. First, it should be noted that if you're not using Wrightsoft's materials list, determining how you want to size that duct as a sheet metal duct or as a flex duct um, might determine how you want to do this. In other words, um, if you're just doing five foot flex ends and you're going to size that run as if it were a flex duct, then changing the entire duct to flex wouldn't change anything about your design. This would remain, let's see if I change this to flex duct, this would be an eight inch duct regardless. And we'll talk more about those duct sizes later, but if you're going to use the flex duct size throughout and you're not using our materials list, then there's no substantive difference between running sheet metal to that flex duct or running the entire thing as flex. Now if you do want to show this for purposes of inspection or installation or uh, because you are using the materials list, then you would want to draw this duct as two pieces. Draw the first piece to the length that you want and then finish the connection. Now this duct is going to size as one continuous piece of duct initially, but it is considered two separate pieces of duct. And technically speaking, this duct here, as it connects at both ends to another duct, is considered a trunk line. Now, one thing we haven't looked at on our property sheet is one of the unique properties to a trunk duct. On a trunk duct, we have an option that says start new trunk. 
Now, if I choose the start new trunk option, I can say, yes, I'd like to start a new trunk. Now, by default, this is going to use, see it went to an 8-inch duct. It's going to use our trunk duct settings. But I have the ability to individually change these components. You see, first, I can change this piece to flex duct, as I intended. Take this duct here, and by starting a new duct, I can now change automatic sizing to no. And I can make this a 7-inch duct. Another common thing you might do while editing a duct system is adjusting individual fittings. If the majority of your boots are straight boots, uh, but a few of them are uh, parallel or torpedo boots, you might want to make adjustments to those individual boots. Simply right click on a boot, or any fitting for that matter, and you can manually make adjustments to what kind of fitting you're using there. Now it should be noted that any fitting that you manually adjust or override uh, will not change if you should change your duct preferences later on. This concludes our video on editing a duct system. Thank you for your time and have a good day.